Why Jesus and not modern religions? Because all religions lead to heaven, right? All, all paths lead to the same mountain, right? You've heard that before. Go to Hebrews real quick with me. Hebrews chapter 1. Okay, let me real quick give you a little background on three really popular modern religions so you guys understand. And again, you can just write things down on your notes there, okay? Hebrews chapter 1. All right, here we go. Boom. Buddhism. Do you realize Buddhism is the fourth largest, fastest growing religion in the world? What does Buddhism have to say about Jesus? Guess what? Nothing. Buddha, Buddha himself did not believe in God, in the existence of God. And Buddha himself clearly claimed, hello everybody, I'm not God. And it's so sad because people worship, Buddhists worship who? Buddha. He's like, I'm not God. Okay? Now, because of that, Buddhists don't believe in Jesus. They don't even believe he existed. Okay? What they believe is you can... I'm not even sure they believe in, this, in salvation. It, their form of salvation is called nirvana. The goal of Buddhism is to free yourself from earthly suffering. And how you do that is you have to follow all these steps of Buddhism. It is through human effort and good works that you can eventually, on your own, through your own effort, achieve nirvana. Does that make sense? The key here is, they don't believe in Jesus, and they believe it's through their own efforts they can achieve their Buddha-type status. Make sense? Let's go to another religion, Mormonism. We've got a Mormon building right down the street. One of the fastest growing religions in the world. According to Mormons, who is Jesus? Well... He is a separate God, Bogich, okay? He's not God. He's separate from Elohim, the Father. So he's a lesser, created being. He was created, how? Through sexual union between the Father and the Mother. And there are many different ways they explain it. And he became the big brother to all other spirit beings. So Jesus in Mormonism is not God. He is a created being. A spirit being. Some say an angel. Whatever. And as a Mormon, the way you get to become your own God, get your own planet, is through your own human effort and good works. Does that make sense? Like Buddha. Buddha said, no, he's not God. I don't even believe in him. We achieve through our efforts. Mormonism says the same thing. He's not God. He's a created being you achieve through human effort. Look, Jehovah's Witness. Jehovah's Witness is clearly say Jesus is not God. He's a lesser. He is a created being. Okay? They believe that he was the first thing that Jehovah created. And again, through their human effort and good works, they can pay for their own sins, Jehovah's Witnesses say. Does that make sense? So the three fastest growing religions in the world all have something in common. Not one of them believe that Jesus is God. And not one of them believe in salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus alone. They believe you have to do the work in order to be saved, in order to be accepted by God, whichever God they believe in, in order to have your sins paid for. Does that make sense? So there's a big difference between Christianity and modern religions. I'll give you an example. Let's see what the Bible has to say. Chapter 1, verse 1, we read, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets, at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Well, sorry, Buddha, but Jesus does exist. Whom, the son, he appointed heir of all things. And through whom, uh-oh, 
also he made the universe. Do you guys see that? Fill it in. Jesus is creator, not created. Like the Mormons say and the Jehovah's Witnesses say. The sun is the radiance of God's glory, meaning that as God, he radiates glory. Just like the Father does, just like the Holy Spirit does, God the Son radiates glory. Remember Jesus said in John 17, Restore to me the glory I had with you before the foundation of time. Not only that, he's also the exact representation of of his being. In other words, God the Son is one in being or essence with the Father and the Holy Spirit, but he's also a separate person. Okay? He is the representation, exact representation. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Okay? Watch this. He sustains all things by his powerful world. Fill in the blank. Jesus is sustainer. He is not sustained by anyone or anything. And watch this. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he, Jesus, became as much superior to whom? The angels. As the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. Fill it in. Jesus is greater than the angels. Thus the angels worship Jesus. In fact, the writer goes on to say, I'm going to read it to you guys. Let's go. Verse 5. For wi of, to which of the angels did God ever say, You're my son, today I become your father. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Talking about God the Son. In speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. But about the sun, he says, your throne, O God. Do you see it? What did God the Father call God the Son? God. Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, do you see it? Has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. He also says in the beginning, Lord, do you see what he's calling him there? You laid the foundations of the earth. Jesus is the creator. And the heavens are the work of your hands, not of the angels, not of some spirit being, okay? Some false spirit being they will remain but you they will perish but you'll remain because he's eternal they will all wear out like a garment you will roll them up like a robe like a garment they will be changed but you remain the same remember jesus is the same today yesterday and forever and your years will never end because he's god to which of the angels did god ever say sit at my right hand until i make your enemies a footstool for your feet and oh, by the way, are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? What do angels do? They help us. And they worship Jesus. Do you see what modern religion says? Jesus is less. You see what the Bible says? Jesus is Lord. And didn't all the modern religions say something else about salvation? Human effort? Good works? To be saved? Pay for your sins? Be accepted by God? Go to chapter 10 real quick. And then we're going to bring it to a, to a home here. Look at verse 11. I love this. The writer was talking about religion, saying it's crazy, it doesn't work. Why? Day after day, every priest does what? stands and does what? Performs his religious duties again and again. He offers the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when this priest, referring to Jesus, high priest, had offered for all time, how many sacrifices for sins? One 
sacrifice for sins. What did he do? He sat down. What does that mean? Job's over. Or human priests, human modern religion, they stand and they do sacrifice, sacrifice, do all their works, their good efforts, and this and that. Hello, the writer says, no, no, no. They offer the same sacrifices day after day after day, which can never pay for your sins. But when this priest finished his work, offered one sacrifice, his body, his blood, for all time, he sat down, paid in full at the right hand of God. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Do you understand what the writer was saying? Religion says you have to do, do, do in order to be saved. Christ says it's already been done for you. Trust in him. You see, religion, every religion recognizes there's something wrong with us. That there's a disconnect from God. Every religion understands. We have a sin nature. They may call it something else. They may not even try to openly acknowledge it. But every religion understands there's something wrong. Because God has put eternity on our hearts. And as a result, modern religion tries all these other different methods to, to, through human effort and good works to pay for sin, to get acceptable for God. The problem is, as the writer of Hebrews has told us, you can offer all kinds of good works day after day. They don't pay for your sins. In fact, they lead us on a highway to hell. But... God the Father sent God the Son to this earth. Unlike us, he was born of the Virgin Mary. Conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. We read that. And is God who was man, the man, Christ Jesus, lived a perfect life, never sinning once. Clearly declared, I am God. And what happened? His enemies put him on a cross. But that was part of the plan. And as Jesus hung there, God the Father in his love for us took our sins, placed them on Jesus, and punished Jesus once for all for all time. Jesus died, but three days later, what happened? He rose from the dead. That means he paid for our sins in full in terms of that day of judgment. And Jesus offers us salvation as a gift. That's why it's called mercy. That's why it's called grace. It's a gift. And we receive the gift by turning away from thinking that we can follow modern religion and its methods of saving ourselves. We say that's wrong. And we turn in humble repentance in faith to Jesus, asking him to forgive us of our sins, trusting in him and him alone, not Mary, not Muhammad, and not modern religion. And Jesus says, through his once for all sacrifice, you're saved. You can relax. Unless you want to stand all day and day after day after day try to impress God with all your good works. Or maybe you trust in the one God the Son who sat down and said, I'm the one who paid for your sins through my good work. It's not Mary. She told us. Not Muhammad. Jesus told us who he is, right? Jesus says, I'm God. It's not modern religion. The writer of Hebrews says, what are you doing? Jesus is not a created being. He's the creator. He's the sustainer. He's the savior. Why Jesus? Because Jesus is the Messiah. How do we know that? Let's go real quick back to Luke chapter 1 where we started.
And now we will bring it to a close. Let's read again verses 26 through 35. And let's see if you now understand what was being said here. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. By the way, the Messiah was going to come through the line of King David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. What does highly favored mean? Full of? She was the recipient of grace, not the dispenser of grace. Do you understand the difference now? Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You are a recipient of grace. You are not the mother of God who dispenses grace. You will conceive and give birth to a son. For unto us a son is born. And he will be called Jesus. What does Jesus mean? Savior. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. Not a created being, the Creator. One in being with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Co-equal, co-eternal, consubstantial. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God, Father, will give him, God the Son, the throne of his father David. And he will reign over Jacob's, what was the word descendants I told you? House forever. His kingdom will never end. Watch me. How do we know Jesus is the Messiah? Fill in the blanks. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 16. God had said to King David, 1,000 years before the birth of Christ, your house, your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Did King David live forever on earth? Is he still sitting on his throne? This was called the Davidic Covenant. God was promising through David the Messiah would come. Now you see those words that were written or a thousand years before Christ? Look what the angel had said to Mary. Again, verse 32 and 33. He will be called great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the what? Throne. Look at the word. Throne of his father David. And he will reign over Jacob's what? House, look at the word, for how long? Forever. And his what? Kingdom will never end. Whoa. So you think maybe the angel didn't make a mistake and say, Mary, you're the one? No, the angel was very clear. Uh, no, 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 not Muhammad. Messiah, Jesus Christ, whose kingdom, throne, and house will last forever. How will this be, Mary asked, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So, watch me, the Holy One, Messiah, anointed one, will be born called son the god the son of god do you understand why jesus and why not mary why jesus and why not muhammad why jesus and why not modern religion why jesus because he's the promised messiah that's why we celebrate his birth that's why we celebrate his life that's why we celebrate and worship him because he's God, God the Son. 
Mary didn't want the worship. She said, no, 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 I need a savior. I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm a bond slave. Muhammad got it confused. The angel Gabriel shows up to him supposedly 600 years later. No, Muhammad, Jesus is not this created being. He's not some good prophet. He is God. Because Jesus said it. I am, I am, I am, I am. Before Abraham was born, I am. He said to the Father, restore to me the glory I had. And modern religion can't save. Because modern religion denies the lordship of Christ. Modern religion says you have to do it through your own efforts. Scripture says, go ahead and try it. Priests have tried it all their lives. Day after day, they try. Day after day, day after day. They stand, they stand, they stand, and they offer, they offer, they offer, and they cannot pay for your sins. You want to try it? Go ahead and try it. Or I got a better idea, the writer says. How about trusting the one, God the Son, who paid once and for all, for all time, for your sins? And the angel Gabriel clearly had said to Mary, let me tell you, Mary, you who are full of grace, the recipient of grace, the one you're going to be carrying is the one that was promised a thousand years earlier through David. That through David's house would come one who would sit on David's throne and whose kingdom would last forever. And that's why Mary said, how's this going to happen? God made it happen. That's why we celebrate Jesus, not just on Christmas Day, but every day. And that's why Jesus said, you come to me, not to Mary, not Muhammad, not modern religion. All of you who are weary and burdened. And Jesus says, I will give you what? Rest. Take your yoke upon me, Jesus says. Learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Jesus says, for my yoke is easy. My burden is light. All authority in heaven and earth belongs to Jesus the Messiah. If you're tired of being tired, if you're tired of being stressed, if you're tired of following the wrong system, Jesus says, come to me. And he says, I will give you rest.